Michelle Obama, Oprah, Serena Williams, all have something in common. At some point during their public lives, they were labeled as angry. It's a label that many black women have struggled with in their professional and personal lives. All this month, NPR is exploring the power of anger. Today, we have a story from NPR's Maya Waina about one author who thinks it's time for black women to embrace their rage. The angry black woman is pretty well known. She shows up everywhere from pop culture to politics. She has an attitude, she's mean, loud, and aggressive. Some trace this stereotype back to the 1950s in a TV show called Amos and Andy. The show was the first TV program to feature an all-black cast, and one character in particular was known for her sharp tongue. I had a sick man. Sick man, nothing. You had no business stuffing yourself the way you did at Mama's house last night. Now, wait a minute. This yeah. is Sapphire, and she constantly nags at her husband throughout the series. She's always berating people, particularly men, uh, and just is not in control of her anger. And that's Brittany Cooper. She's a professor and author of the book Eloquent rage, a black feminist discovers her superpower. Cooper says that the stereotype known as the angry black woman used to be called the sapphire. And it's a stereotype that black women still struggle with almost 70 years after sapphire was introduced on screen. Even someone like Michelle Obama has talked about trying to distance herself from the stereotype. Right before leaving the White House, she talked about it with Oprah. When you were labeled that angry black woman, was that one of the things that knocked you back a Well, that bit? was one of those things that you just sort of think, Dang, you don't even know me. Yeah. Whether or not they are actually angry, Cooper says that labeling black women that way has a particular effect. Whenever someone weaponizes anger against black women, it is designed to silence them. It is designed to discredit them and to say that they are overreacting, that they are being hypersensitive, that their reaction is outsized. And she says this happens because generally anger is an emotion that people are really uncomfortable with. It's something that they want to control rather than address. Unless, of course, we're talking about white men being angry and then, you know, the whole sort of American political system is designed to respond uh, to white male anger and white male discontent. We both felt the sting of those daily slights throughout our entire lives. The folks who crossed the street in fear of their safety, the clerks who kept a close eye on us in all those department stores, the people at formal events who assumed we were the help and those who have questioned our intelligence, our honesty, even our love of this country. And I know that these little indignities are obviously nothing compared to what folks across the country are dealing with every single day. Those nagging worries that you're going to get stopped or pulled over for absolutely no reason. The fear that your job application will be overlooked because of the way your name sounds. The agony of sending your kids to schools that may no longer be separate, but are far from equal. The realization that no matter how far you rise in life, how hard you work to be a good person, a good parent, a good citizen, for some folks, it will never be enough. And all of that is going to be a heavy burden to carry. It can feel isolating. It can make you feel like your life somehow doesn't matter. That you're like the invisible man that Tuskegee grad Ralph Ellison wrote about all those years ago. And as we've seen over the past few years, those feelings are real. They're rooted in decades of structural challenges that have made too many folks feel frustrated and invisible. And those feelings are playing out in communities like Baltimore and Ferguson and so many others across this country. Cooper has pointed to the confirmation hearings for Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh as an example. Senator Lindsey Graham was shouting during Justice Kavanaugh's testimony. This is going to destroy the ability of good people to come forward because of this crap. It was a turning point during the hearings and Justice Kavanaugh was ultimately confirmed. Cooper says that black women have had to be more strategic when expressing their anger, but it doesn't mean that they shouldn't. As a lecturer at a university, this was at the front of her mind. It was just always that I thought that I should like be in better control because I wanted people to respect me and I didn't want my anger to cause people to not be able to hear the things that I was trying to say. Her feelings changed when she ran into a former student on campus one day. 
you know, she said, I love to listen to you lecture because your lectures were like filled with rage, but it was like the most eloquent rage ever. And she was saying it was the authenticity of your emotion that made me want to listen. Now, Cooper thinks about the energy that comes from her anger, not as something to be managed, but as a superpower to be used. We think about superpowers as like Batman using his smarts to outwit everybody or whatever. And I just think, you know, the biggest superheroes we've ever have have been Black women who have looked at a set of conditions that are designed for them to fail and designed to kill them and said, we're going to live anyway. And not only we're going to live, we're going to thrive. Black women, she says, like the three co-founders, two of whom are queer of the Black Lives Matter movement. She also writes in her book about Beyonce and the ways that she shows her Black feminist power through pop hits. This is part of what she means when she describes rage as a superpower. It is a deep source of creative energy, Cooper says. It's part of what gives Black women the strength to fight injustice and to imagine and build new worlds. Now, she also admits that rage can be destructive, but that's why she says rage is just a starting point. Part of what I'm trying to get at is that Black women are never only angry. We can be angry and at the same time be joyous, at the same time be sad, at the same time be deeply in love or be heartbroken. So rage for me becomes the ground zero for the reclamation of, of Black women's full emotional lives. For Cooper, reclaiming these spidey senses called emotions is a way to fight for a sense of freedom that Black people can actually enjoy. A revolution where they can dance and experience justice in their everyday lives. Milo Aina, NPR News, Washington. Yeah.